What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Leo coming to you guys with yet another video. So, coming at you guys today, predicting my matches, the matches that I feel like are going to happen at this year's WrestleMania 40 event. Now, I know WrestleMania 40 is still a long ways off, so anything can change and anything can happen. But I wanted to give you guys my predictions as far as the matches that I want to see happen at WrestleMania 40 this year, or I feel like are going to happen. And I'll give you guys my, my reasons why I think they're going to indeed happen. So I end up uh, making a list on my phone here. So if you guys see me looking down, that's pretty much what I'm doing. Because I had to make up a list of the matches that I think are going to happen. So the first match I think is going to happen at this year's WrestleMania 40 event is for the United States Championship. That being Logan Paul walking in as the U.S. Champion and defending that championship against L.A. Knight. I feel like this is the direction the WWE is going in. I really do. I feel like you're going to have a situation where you're going to have Logan Paul, who is pretty much a heat magnet at this point, and you have one of the most over faces or the most over people in the company right now in LA Knight. And I do feel like when it's all said, I do think LA Knight is going to be the one to defeat Logan Paul and become the champion. Just imagine the pop that LA Knight can get if he is able to win that championship, that crowd is going to erupt. The crowd is going to absolutely lose it. And I do think they deserve to go crazy because LA Knight has definitely has elevated his game and definitely been one of the key features on SmackDown. So I would love to see him get some gold around his way if it's not going to be a world championship at this current point. So, I have to give that first match to Logan Paul and LA Knight. The next match is a match I feel like is going to happen the way they've been teasing it on Monday Night Raw. And that is Awesome Truth of The Miz and R-Truth versus The Judgment Day for the Undisputed Tag Team Championships. I really feel like they're going in the direction of kind of like how they did with the Bloodline with when Sami Zayn joined the Bloodline. I think they're doing something similar to that here, but with R-Truth kind of trying to find his way into being a member and a part of the Judgment Day. So I do think that is a story that they're going to probably tell. I think they should do a slow build to slow build to this, and then you can have it op actually happen at WrestleMania this year because I really feel like they're actually giving R-Truth something to work with, and I'm loving it. And I really hope that this could be a match that they have because I feel like R-Truth, I don't think he's ever been tag team champion, so I really, and I always was a fan of the Austin Truth um, um, tag team back in the day. I really wish they kind of went all in on them, but they never did. So hopefully this time around they can kind of, you know, get them back on the same page and, and actually give them some tag team go and see where that goes because I think it could be very entertaining to see what a, the, the tag team division would look like with uh, R-Truth and uh, The Miz being the tag team champions. The next match is an extreme rules match because it's Philadelphia. It's Philadelphia. They're going to want to do some type of extreme uh, match or something like that. You know what I mean? And, re and that is going to be Drew McIntyre versus Sami Zayn. Drew McIntyre uh, took out Sami Zayn a couple of weeks ago, and I thought he was going. Sami Zayn was going to cost him the championship at um, Raw Day One, but he didn't show up. I do think they're going to slowly tease him coming back, and I do think this could be a potential match that we could have between the two at WrestleMania. That's if he's still um, around by the time you know um, WrestleMania comes around, because I think his contract is. Uh, before then or a little bit after I'm not too sure comment down below let me know but if he's still around I do think this could be a good match and this could start you know getting the momentum back on Sami Zayn after everything that's happened with him in the past year that bloodline storyline chef's kiss easily one of my favorite um, matches between for Sami Zayn um, at least since he's been on main roster. He's had a couple of ma great matches, but that match was a straight-up banger. Let's not get it twisted. But I do think this could be a match. It could be hard-hitting, and you can have some type of a David versus Goliath storyline just because, you know, they they see Sami Zayn as this true underdog babyface, and you have the new heel on the monster in uh, Drew McIntyre. So I do think that will mesh well, and I do think this could be a great match, especially when you consider it being an Extreme Rules match on top of that. So I do think that match is going to happen. The next match we got to talk about 
is a potential dream match I do think is going to happen. And that is Bianca Belair versus Jade Cargo. The long-awaited match I think a lot of us have been wanting to see. Bianca versus Jade Cargo. It has WrestleMania written all over it. You know for a fact they're going to want Bianca to have some type of high-profile match at WrestleMania. And what better high-profile match to have for Bianca than a match between her and Jay Cargill. Jay Cargill coming in, and you can have this start off at the Rumble. Maybe Jade or Bianca eliminates one uh, each other or something like that. Either Jade eliminates Bianca or Bianca eliminates Jade. And you can set that up and plant the seeds for a potential match at WrestleMania. So I do think, when you think about it, that is a great match for Bianca because it still keeps her in a high-profile storyline without her being in the title picture. So I do think that is a match that I can definitely see happening. The next match is for the Intercontinental Championship. And surprisingly, Gunther is not the Intercontinental Champion. We are going to have Jey Uso beat Gunther at some point during the road to WrestleMania. And Jey Uso becomes the new Intercontinental Champion. And he faces Jimmy Uso. So brother versus brother for the championship. But on top of that, a caveat. If it's personal like I believe it's going to be, you can have this be a tribal combat match for the Intercontinental Championship. And hopefully this time they actually stick to the rules. But I do think they're definitely going to... I feel like that is the one match you can easily say is confirmed going to happen at WrestleMania this year. You're going to see Jey Uso versus Jimmy Uso. I really think they're going to do it this year. And if they don't, oh my God, they, they dropped the ball. But I do think the match is going to happen. And I honestly think it would be great. But just imagine how much more intriguing it could be if the championship is involved, a championship is involved. Them going at, like Jimmy Uso going after his first singles championship. Jey Uso finally win his first singles championship as main event, Jey Uso, since leaving the bloodline and stuff like that. So that would be a huge story for both of these guys because Jimmy can be jealous and be like, you know, he wants that championship now. He wants to go after his, his brother to get that championship and will do anything and everything he can to get that championship. So I do think when you think about it, this is probably one of the, the matches that I'm going to be looking forward to. And definitely... If Jay can win, because I feel like when you look at it, there isn't really anybody I can see beating Gunther right now. And I feel like with Jay Uso, him beating Roman Reigns, pinning him, I think put him on a different stratosphere. I really do. And I think him beating Gunther, who has pretty much been a dominant champion and has doesn't need help like Roman, I think could be more intriguing because now you're going to make Jay Uso an even better bigger star just because he beat somebody who has been unbeatable since he's came into the, the WWE on special on the main roster. So now you're creating an even bigger star and now you're freshing up Gunther to do something else for Mania which we'll get into just a, in a, just a second. So that is the match I think is going to happen. Jey Uso, Jimmy Uso for the Intercontinental Championship. And speaking of Gunther, we were just talking about him. Gunther versus Brock Lesnar. I really think that match is going to happen. They have been, they teased it at the Rumble last year with the stare off, but they didn't have it at Mania. I really think Gunther and Brock should happen. Let these two go out there and do what they do. I think you can have a banger of a match between these two. I think that's one of the matches I've been saying since like Gunther pretty much came into uh, the WWE when he was part of NXT UK. I was like, I would love to see him face Brock Lesnar and see what these two can do. And potentially, we could potentially be getting it this year. And I hope they pull the trigger on it. And I feel like when you think about it, this feud between the two doesn't really need the championship, if you're being honest. Because if you're doing that, the reason, and here's the reason why I feel like it doesn't need the championship. Because it will, it will create a, a kind of a, a problem to us in a sense because we know who's going to win. But if the championship is not involved, it makes it more intriguing because we don't know what the outcome could be. Because then it could be a situation where it can go either way. Either man can win. But if you have the championship involved, then it becomes a thing where, okay, we know who's going to win. The same thing we've been saying about Roman versus The Rock. That view does not need the championship either. Like, you can have these two go at it without the championship because it becomes more unpredictable as far as what the outcome of the match can be. And I think the thing with wrestling, 
what we need is we need more unpredictability. When we go into these pay-per-views and shows, we want to, to understand and be be like entertained, which we are, but have unpredictability about it because now we don't know if this is going to happen, if this person's going to win, if that person's going to win, if this going to happen, that's going to happen. We need more of that. Not everything needs to be predictable in the world of wrestling. I get it. Sometimes the obvious thing may be the best choice, but in a sense, you can also make unpredictable storylines because it can be able to pop the crowd because like, oh, I didn't expect that to happen. But then if you have something like a situation where you have a wrestler go out there and we know that they're going to win, then it yeah, it's going to be a good match, but what's the unpredictable uh, unpredictable factor about it? You know what I mean? So hopefully that that's something that they do focus on probably if they do go to this do this feud i do think that the feud should happen and the match should happen but i just don't think the championship needs to be a factor or be involved in any way shape or form i'm just being honest the next match for the world heavyweight championship cm punk versus seth rollins i think it's going to happen cm punk is winning the rumble and he is going to choose Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. And he's going to headline his first WrestleMania. Because that's something he's been wanting to do for a long time. A long time. And now we're in a situation where it's 10 years ago. He walked out and 10 years later, he comes back and then wins the Rumble. And faces Rollins. Somebody who he's had his history with over social media and stuff like that. And everything like that. But I do think the feud should happen. I really do. Because I really think this is a dream match for a lot of people. This has been a dream match for a lot of fans over the last couple of years. And we're finally able to get it. Like, honestly, I didn't even have... Like, when I... I think I did a video, of, like, talking about WrestleMania matches a couple months ago. I didn't even have CM Punk potentially returning. But it just shows you how far and how things can change in the WWE on a dime. Like... It can be a situation where one person is in one company one day and a different company the next. That just shows you how the wrestling world and the wrestling business is evolving constantly. It's a constantly evolving. You're seeing new stars. You're getting to see these returns that you didn't see happening. Like, nobody really saw CM Punk ever coming back to WWE. But he's definitely came back and he's definitely changed the game. He is, he's pretty much drawing a lot of numbers getting a lot of revenue for the company. So I don't think this is something that they're going to want to go all in on. No pun intended. But I do think that match is going to happen. The next match is a, another dream match. And that's AJ Lee versus Becky Lynch. AJ, I feel like might return at the Rumble. Just I feel like that crowd is going to go bananas if she does return at the Rumble. And I feel like if you're looking at the current landscape of the women's division and you're trying to figure out who could be a good opponent for her, I really think Becky and AJ Lee can have a great match. A great match. And and the reason why I have Becky in this position is because similar similar to what I said earlier with um with J Bianca, they don't need to be in the championship picture to be in an important they don't they can be in important roles at WrestleMania without being in the title picture. And I do think the reason why I have this match, because it's going to lead into something else happening. I do think at some point we could see CM Punk and AJ Lee versus Rollins and Lynch in a mixed tag at Backlash. I think that's the route that they're gonna slowly go in. I think that's the route they should go in. Becky, I know people have been saying her versus Rhea. No, no, no. I'm sorry. No, no. I don't want to see that. I If you want to have her face Rhea, you can have her face Rhea on, at Elimination Chamber. I think that would be a great match for them to do for that pay-per-view. Because she, I mean, Becky Lynch is a draw, but I just don't want to see her facing Rhea at Mania when that, when that spot should definitely go to someone else, which we'll talk about later. Um, But I do think AJ Lee... Coming back and, and maybe her eliminating Becky or maybe Becky eliminating AJ. That's going to get her a little cheap heel pop for, for Becky. And you can kind of play into that just a little bit where she doesn't go full heel. But she's kind of blurring the lines a little bit in the sense of being a tweener. Which I think she would definitely thrive in that type of role. Because, I mean, she still gets cheers. Don't get me wrong. 
I just feel like her her popularity has kind of watered down just a little bit. And maybe this is a kind of way to kind of freshen things up again for Becky, in my opinion. And I think, like I said earlier, she definitely is going to be in a high-profile match. And I think a better, a good high-profile match for her is her versus AJ Lee. And you can play into that and then have that match. And then you can have the mixed tag at the next pay-per-view the next month. So I think that is a match that I would love to see. The next one is for the WWE Women's Championship. We have Bayley versus EO Sky. I think... Bailey is probably going to win the Rumble. I feel like they're kind of going to go this Batista route like they did with Evolution back in 2005 when Batista won. I think they're going to do this this feud and Bailey is going to kind of have like that Batista type of character because I think people are starting to, um, I think she is going to turn face at some point and I do think she may be in the road to WrestleMania after winning the Rumble. She gets, you know, um, kicked out of damage control, and she, she sells the injuries or whatever the case is, and then she comes back maybe a month later, and then she announces, I'm picking EO for the championship at WrestleMania, and then we have that match, and then we have Bayley win, and now she's back on top of the women's division. The next match is a women's tag team ladder match. Um, I feel like there's going to probably be at least one ladder match that they should do, and I feel like why not give it to the women? So, we have the current champions, Katana Chance and Caden Carter versus the Holy Alliance of Alba Fire and Isla Dawn versus Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark versus Natalya and Tegan Knox versus Piper Niv and Chelsea Green versus the Kabuki Warriors versus Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae versus the returning Sasha Banks and Naomi. I think Naomi is probably already on her way back to WWE because I think her contract expires not too long after Hard to Kill, which is this... Um, Saturday, so be on the lookout because my predictions for that show are going to be dropping. And also some of the uh, part two to that is talking about who I think is going to potentially be showing up as debuting and stuff like that. So be on the lookout for that video uh, coming probably either tomorrow or or, some, or later today. So be on the lookout for that. So I do think having, I do think if, Nata if Naomi comes back, I feel like Sasha Banks is not too far behind. And especially if Triple H is kind of booking the WWE and kind of booking the tag team division. I feel like it'll get more importance than it was under the Vince McMahon umbrella. And I feel like Triple H is a huge Sasha Banks fan. And he's probably going to try to do everything he can to acquire her. And I wouldn't be surprised if she were to show up at the Rumble and you can kind of... Um, cause I already heard rumors and reports that if they, um, that Sasha Banks and Naomi are probably going to come back as a tag team and probably be put in the tag team division. So I do think that is a match that I could see happening. And I feel like a lot of match getting all these women involved and, and kind of be able to showcase their talents a little bit more is definitely uh, well deserved and stuff like that. So definitely I would love to see this match and see how it all ultimately plays out. I mean, you, you can't have... Philadelphia without having an Extreme Rules match or a ladder match and probably and why not having both happen at WrestleMania the next match is have uh, is Rhea Ripley Versus Liv Morgan for the Women's World Championship Liv Morgan comes up short in the Royal Rumble but goes on and wins the Elimination Chamber and um, Is set to happen and, uh, and the history is there between Liv and Rhea. It's clear as day Liv got taken out by Rhea. She was the last one eliminated by Rhea. She was the last one to beat Rhea Ripley. So the history is there. And they were a tag team a couple years ago. And she got turned on by Rhea Ripley. So the story is there. And she's going to want to have this redemption arc when she does come back and try to get revenge on the person that took her out. And then do whatever she can to make you know, Rhea Ripley's life a living hell. And that, what better way to do that than taking that championship? And another thing for Liv Morgan, it would be able, it would be in the sense of be able to create a new star because I think Liv Morgan is right there at on the precipice of becoming a new star. I just think, you know, the thing is she needs a, a huge story that can help engage her to, with the fans because I think the fans are behind her she has the she has the fan support she she can go in the ring she just needs a little help with the promos but I think she can do just good um so I think she'll be okay but I do think this is the match that they should go with I really do you're making a new star and if she wins the elimination chamber she's also making history because she's competed in every elimination chamber match 
She's competed in every elimination chamber match and has not won. So I think the 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 odds could be in her favor going into that match. And I feel like the fans would definitely be behind her. I only the only problem is I know if they some people have said it's probably gonna be is when it's in Australia they're probably not gonna want her to win. But I mean, why not? I mean, Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley, I feel like they've had good matches. So I feel like them having it at Mania, maybe adding a stipulation if you want to protect Rhea Ripley, and then Rhea Ripley can take some time off to get married to Buddy Matthews and stuff like that. And then she goes back, and then maybe you can have a rematch there. But I do think you should you pull the trigger and make Liv Morgan a star because I definitely think she should be up there with the Biancas and stuff like that for sure. And then the main event for uh, for the undisputed Universal Championship, we got the Tribal Chief, the head of the table, the end all be all, Roman Reigns versus the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. I think it is there. I think you do Roman, Rock, Chamber, and Roman is going to be his ego is going to be through the roof. And it just makes the moment even sweeter if Cody does defeat him. I know people have been saying Roman is probably going to defeat Cody again just so he can break another record, which is, I believe, Hulk Hogan's record, which he'll break probably in September or something like that. But WWE, stop stat pat, Stop stat, stat padding at this point. Just do it. Like, I feel like if you have Roman win, you're going to piss off so many people. It's not even crazy. You already pissed off a lot of people at WrestleMania 39. But I feel like if you do that again, it's like, what happens now? Because at this point... If you have Roman win, I feel like you're going to be out of challenge. There's nobody else that I feel like you can have him face because everybody else that, that hasn't faced him haven't even been built up to even look like a threat to him in any sort of way. So I feel like they need to have put the title on Cody. You can have a new era with Cody being the champion. And then you can have new challengers facing Cody left and right coming out of Mania. And Roman can take time off to do whatever he wants to do. Probably do a movie or something, then come back refreshed, and maybe you can have a storyline where he eventually turns face. I really do think he's going to turn face at some point. But I just feel like you, you got to pull the trigger at some point. You really do. I really hope they do pull the trigger with Cody, but I don't know, knowing WWE, because especially what they did last year. And if you guys don't know, I was pretty pissed about that. But I, I really hope they, they kind of make up for that and, um, and have Cody win here. We will have to see how it goes. But... That's the end of the video, you guys. Uh, comment down below. Let me know. What do you guys think about my WrestleMania 40 predict predictions uh, as far as the match card goes? Comment down below. What are some matches that you would like to personally see happen at WrestleMania 40 this year? Do you agree with a lot of the matches that I did or don't you? Or, or maybe you don't agree. Let me know in the comment section down below. I love having uh, dialogues and, uh, and discussions with you guys. Uh, we're on the road to 750 subscribers. So if, you, if you're new to this channel, subscribe. It's absolutely free. You can always change your mind in the future. But why would you want to do that? We're the fastest growing um, YouTube channels in the wrestling community. Posting pretty much daily wrestling content. So you don't want to miss it. Um, but I appreciate everybody tuning in. And I'll see you guys in the next video.